All right, we are going to get started. I was to pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you tonight that that would be with us and guide us and bless us through this process, oh Lord, as we, Lord, unpack uh, the steps to the cross. And we pray that each step of the way that you bring to us some spiritual meaning and that we we find uh, some uh, some guidance and direction that applies directly to our lives. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. So um, tonight we're we're studying um, the uh, the fig tree, Jesus cleansing the temple, uh, Jesus authority questioned, and then his um, uh, the anointing, and then and then up to the the Garden of Gethsemane and the betrayal and so so that's a lot to cover but it's uh it's going to be uh appropriate so why don't we go back to chapter um 11 right and verse one right and so um that that uh that verse in chapter um 11 beginning verse one we have what's called the triumph of entry. And we all studied about just the irony of, of him finally going into Jerusalem. And so as we studied on prior weeks that Jesus and his disciples were headed to uh, Jerusalem from Galilee, right, to attend the Passover festival, right? And that's a um, that's also a uh, 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 a, a study that uh, you could you could engage in. You know what is the um, what is the uh, what is the Passover, right? And so you know Passover historically was the uh, it's a seven day holiday. Right, which is part of the feast of the of the unleavened bread, and so you can you can study all of that. Uh, we are going to come back at some point uh, following um, this uh, Bible study, and we're going to we're going to study uh, Jesus uh, uh, throughout the Bible and and look at Jesus in the feast of Israel. So how he is seen, right? The feast of the unleavened bread. There's the um uh there's the there's a study of of Jesus being the scapegoat, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So anyway, as we go to chapter eleven, verse one, it says, And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethlehem, Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples. So this is chapter eleven, verse one. And we went over this last week, and he said, go uh, your way into the village over against you, and as soon as you be entered into it, you shall find a coat tied, wherein never a man have said, it says, loose him and bring him. And if any man shall say unto him, why do you do this? Say that the Lord have need of him, and straightway he will send him hither, right? Now, last week we talked about the irony that it seemed that... Um, Jesus is not alone in this process, that he's just not, this stuff is just not happening haphazardly, that somehow he has a broad connection, right? Now, verse four says, and they and they went their way and found the court, coat tied by the door uh, without in a place where two ways met and they loosed him. So, so he said, go, right? They went, they were obedient and he went, they went and they found. Now we can, we can make this uh, into something uh, super spiritual that God can do anything. God is always in control, that God is in the background, right? And so that's one way of viewing it. But I think another way of viewing it is that, you know, Jesus had stronger connections, right, than is is just simply revealed in the Gospels, right? So, um and look at verse five, it says, and certain of them that stood there said unto them, what do you loosing this coat? And they said unto them, uh, even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. What did Jesus say? He said, tell them that what? Tell them 
that the Lord hath need of him, right? So that meant that there was some connection. They he's had some interaction. There's there's no nothing in the gospel that says that uh, that Christ has gone into this part of the country. That most of his work was in in Galilee, which was the northern part of the Holy Land. But it's clear that he that his reach is further than we think, right? Amen. 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 Right. And so in verse seven, it says, and they brought the coat to Jesus. Now, this is where this is where we're now, where we get our Palm Sunday. And it says, and they brought the coat to Jesus and cast their garments on on him. And he sat upon him and spread their garments along the way. And others cut down branches off the trees and showed them uh, or laid them in the way. So these are the palms that we have on Palm Sunday, right? And it says, and they that went before and they followed cried saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, uh, Hosanna to the highest, right? And we talked about the irony of Jesus coming in as a cult, that when a king returns from victory, he's returning into his his kingdom. Generally, he's on a white stallion, and they and they lay roses and flowers, and and they honor him with gifts, right? And so here we see that that they gave Jesus what they had, Amen. And so it's not so much what you give, the quality of what you give. But the key here is that you give what you have, right? But the super irony is that he comes in on a coat, right? We talked about that last week. He's not on a stallion, right? He is, and and he is not coming as the king of Israel. He's not coming as the son of David, right? And that is, remember, we talked about the two aspects of of the Messiah, of the Savior. Right. We said there were two aspects, two ways of viewing the Messiah. Right. Number one way of viewing him is the warrior king. Right. So he's coming to be the mighty king like David and Saul and the, um, uh, Samson and all of the great mighty warriors of Israel <clears throat> toward the kingdom of Israel to its original glory. So. This king in Jesus as the king of Israel, right, could have come as a mighty war, but is revealed that he is coming as the suffering servant, right, as the anointed one to die at Calvary for the sins of the world, right? So the Messiah, the Savior, the suffering servant. But look at verse 10 again. It says, blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now it's going to be interesting, and I want you to to make a mental footnote here because you see, as he enters Jerusalem, there is there's great uh, support, right? But down the line, right, when he is uh, eventually um, arrested and he is sentenced, then it's the day of Passover, and there was the there was the there was the history or the tradition that on the day of Passover, right, that the uh, Roman government would give Israel a gift, a holiday gift, right? Passover is a holiday. And that Passover gift was to release a prisoner, right, from incarceration, right? And so they brought before the crowd. Now the crowd on on this day is saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. But on on Passover, when when uh when Pontius Pilate brings out, he brings out the Christ, Jesus, the so-called Christ, your king of the Jews, and they also bring out Barabbas, right, who was incarcerated and condemned to death for attempting to overthrow the government, right? So he had come as Barabbas, Barabbas, write that name down, and you can study it. He had come to overthrow the government, 
right, as a revolutionary. And so they take it before the crowd to vote. And they said, crucify him, Jesus, but give us Barabbas. And so it's interesting how, how the crowd changes, right? So if you, and we're going to get to that next week. Next week's Bible study is going to be on Tuesday, on Tuesday because it won't be Wednesday. It'll be Tuesday because of the Holy Week, right? Um, so we see here in verse 9, it says, and they went before and they, and they followed and they said, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the king, our father David. But remember some four days later, the same crowd is going to turn on Jesus and they're going to say crucify him, right? Now look at verse 11. It says, and Jesus entered into Jerusalem and, and into the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out into Bethany with the 12 right? So we make note of verse 11, right? That he, when he get, when they arrive in Jerusalem, right? That he first goes in and he goes into the temple and he looked around about all things. And then he goes out of Jerusalem back to Bethany. It is as if he's doing some kind of surveillance, right? What does that mean, surveillance? Anybody? He was checking things out. Right. Okay, so he's checking things out. All right. He's checking things out. So that's just something interesting to know. Okay, so now as we go into step number seven, the fig tree. Okay, so let's look at verse 12. Uh, it says, and on the next day, right, when they were come from Bethany, right? So he went out, uh, he went into Jerusalem, looked and went into the temple, verse 11. Then he went back to Bethany. So that meant that he must have had some kind of hookup. Remember, you know, now we're looking through the lens that maybe there's more involved than we know, okay? Right? So now he 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 goes to Bethany, right? So maybe he had a connection there. He had followers there. He had lodging there. But then it says on verse 12, it says on the next day when they were come from Bethany, it says he was hungry, right? Now look at this. This is called the cursing of the fig tree. And seeing a fig tree afar <clears throat> having leaves, he came. And it, 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 it perhaps he might find anything thereon. And when he had came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of the hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it, right? Now, this is a symbolism, right? This is a, a story. Now, I'm going to pull up something uh, online. Okay, so uh okay so everybody can see now this is from christianity.com now it's important to look at another version of the same story right so the fig tree story is told in um matthew and mark i, don't, I know it's not told in um john it perhaps maybe it's told in luke it's not told in john now it says early now this is another version because these gospels are telling the same story but from a different perspective a different lens right uh and so they they have a different twist of the story if you and i went to the same concert when we went back and we wrote a paper about it we would tell it in different ways right and have different language okay now it says in this it says this is matthew 21 it says, early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing except it. Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered, right? So clearly this is a story. This is a, a metaphor, Right. So he's he's this is a uh uh he's he's having this analogy 
but it's for a purpose because obviously fig trees are not um are, are not barren right um so um this was a barren fig tree now i'm i'm going to show you here um uh a little bit something now it says the three insights will help us understand the story. It says, first, in, in the Old Testament, the fig tree often stood as a symbol for the nation of Israel. Okay? So this, mm -hmm. this, this, he, this act of cursing the fig tree is, uh, he's doing it for a purpose, right? So Israel is viewed as a fig tree. So the fig tree stood as a symbol for the nation of Israel. Israel. Then it says, second, we also need to observe that the cursing of the fig tree occurs on the, on the Monday of Jesus's Passion Week, four days before his crucifixion, right? Then third, it says, this story is placed next to the story of the cleansing of the temple that we're going to read in a minute, right? Now, the cleansing of the temple is where the money lenders had turned the Lord's house into a den of thieves. They were profiting from them uh, who exchanged, they were profiteers who exchanged foreign currency and also sold the animals that worshipers from a distant town would buy the sacrifice before the Lord. So obviously part of Passover is that people would come with lambs or they would buy lambs Right, and they would come and they would offer sacrifices to bless their home, bless their family. That was part of the Jewish tradition, right? Where you sacrificed an innocent lamb. So they were selling those lambs, right? But look at what it says. It says by shrewd marketing, they could charge high rates and make a killing off the pilgrims. These are the people that came from foreign lands, Jews who came to Jerusalem, right? Uh, who came to worship. So it says the whole scene angered our Lord because he knew that the temple should be a house of prayer, right? And not a, not a, 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 a place of commerce. Now we're going to read that in a minute because Jesus comes in and says that he turns over, right? The tables of the, money exchanges, right? Now, here is the meaning of the parable of the fig tree. It says, cursing the fig tree was always Jesus, was Jesus' way of saying that the whole nation had become spiritually barren, right? Before the Lord. They had the form of godliness, but not the reality. They knew the right words to say, but their hearts were far off, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to turn here, um, for a minute. So it 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 says the importance of fig trees, right? It says according to Smith's Bible dictionary, the fig tree was common to the area both in biblical times and still the day, right? And it was common knowledge in Jesus' times that if you saw some leaves on a fig tree, you could also expect fruit unless the tree was barren. Right. Now we're going to talk a minute about our own personal law right? That is their evidence we should be fruitful, right? Now, here, here is where I want to, I, I want to end, right? I want to end here. Now, it says that um, uh, the um, author E.W.G. Masterman explains the, how the fact Jesus was in Jerusalem during the Passover fits into botanical seasons, or this was the spring season. This was the spring, you know, this was the this was the time of growth, right? The time where flowers are beginning to bud, okay? So now uh, look at what he writes. He says that the miracle of our Lord, which occurs in the Passover season, he says here was about April, right? It says when the young leaves are newly appearing, right? Right. So he got there, he saw the leaves, right? But he didn't see any fruit. That's why he cursed it, right? But look at look at how he explains this. This is really masterful. It says, when the young leaves are newly appearing in April, every fig tree which is going to bear fruit at all will have some taxes, taxes, T-A-K-S, taxes, right? Or immature fruit immature figs. Now, see, 
people have wondered why would he curse a fig tree for not having figs when it was not his season, right? But here is the thing about evidence that you're not bearing. There should be some progress, right? Now look at what it says here. It says every fig tree which is going to bear fruit at all will have some tackish, immature figs upon it, even though the time of figs, right, i.e. the ordinary edible figs, either early or late crop, was not yet, right? It says that the tackish is not only eaten today, but it is sure evidence, even when it falls, right that the tree bearing that the tree bearing it is not barren the this active parable must be compared with Luke 16 6 and 8 now the time of judgment was was surely coming and the fate of fruitless Jewish uh uh country was foretold now here is the here here is the point here right as we go back um as we go back. Okay, as we go back here, right? So, right, so the cursing of the fig tree. So what that said is that, right? So if you look in, 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 in what the story says is that he came upon this fig tree, he saw the leaves, but he didn't see the tashes, right? So the tashes is the progress that is being made, right? That That is going to grow into a fig tree. So those of us that are believers, right? There should be some evidence. Maybe it is not the full fig, right? But there should be some evidence that we're not barren. What does barren mean? Empty. What does empty mean? That it's it's not it's it's not filling up, it's not growing. There is nothing barren. There's nothing in us, right? And woe unto us that when we make a decision to turn our lives around, woe unto us when we give our lives to the Lord. Woe woe unto us as when we are in this game of life. And there's no evidence of any progress, empty, barren, right? So once again, he cursed it, right? Not that he did not see the full fig, but he didn't see any evidence on that fig tree that there was growth. And his conclusion was, was that fig tree was barren. So it wasn't so much that he cursed it, he just concluded that this is a barren, this is a barren tree, right? Now, I'm going to tell you what, what is the good news of this text for us, right? It means that I might not have the business yet, right? I might not uh, have filled up my bank account. I, I might not have lost all the weight that I desire, which is the full fit, what is the full fig tree. But I can thank God for the tashes. Hello. There should be some tashes in our lives, some evidence. Are you with me? Some growth. Growth. I ain't perfect yet. I haven't gotten it all together. But there's there's evidence. You're going to see something. You're going to see something, you know? And so, you know, instead of being down, who is God talking to tonight? Instead of being down that you don't have it all together, but you can thank God that I got something and that something shows that I'm not barren. I still got my job. I got friends who lost their job, you know? I'm making my car note, right? My bank account, I, I got some stock. I got a house, I'm paying my bill, you know? So that's the that's the interesting thing about that. Now, let's go to verse 15. Any questions about that? What is that, how does that teaching on a fig tree uh, 
reflect to you in your personal life and just hearing that, hearing that uh, teaching. What do you hear God saying to you? That I should always try to grow and develop in my personal walk with him and that I shouldn't stay stagnant. Okay. All right. You know, I, I look at it too as um, it shows the love of God that he, he cares about what you're doing. He's looking at your progress to see if you're growing. All right. For me, it says to keep going. That although I may not be where I want to be, I'm better than I was before. And God knows that. Okay. Anyone else? Um, for me, it, it means to continue to take the steps uh, to where you need to be and where you want to be, um, even if you're not there yet. Um, God, God sees all the steps that you're taking. All right. Anyone else? Okay, so for me, there's a couple of things I want to leave, leave you with on that story. So it's two that I want to leave you. You know, so so number number one is is that that God is really looking for the the full fig. Okay, that that while he, uh, well or. He's let me say it like this because he in that text he wasn't expecting it for big he was expecting the evidence right he was expecting the um Tasha's he was expecting the Tasha's at least the Tasha's so 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 there is a there's an expectation of evidence there's an expectation of progress so I think that's one side that I, that I, I think pastorally pastorally I I would want you to leave with. Then the other, and it's very interesting that no one uh, grasped this in their um, response. Does anybody else have a response that didn't say anything of what this text means to you before I get to my second point? Okay, so um, so so the other portion of it is that. Um, that is that we should we should be appreciative of the progress that we have made right to me that is that is the anti trauma message here right that sometimes we are traumatized uh because of what we don't have right and not thankful that at least there is some cautious in my life might not have the brand new car but i do got a car right i might not this and i might not that and so there is an appreciation that there's evidence in my life anybody see evidence in their life anybody see progress in their life you know these are times that you can look over your shoulder and these are times where you can look at other people and say i thank but for the grace of god all right so um uh ch chapter 15 verse 15 chapter 11 verse 15 it says and they came to jerusalem and Je and jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and, and bought in the temple now this is important for what we just read right we understood, you know, that there were there were them. Jesus came into the temple and he saw the individuals who were overcharging, right? And so in the temple lobby, the outer court, so there was the outer court and the inner court. Now, this was not in the inner court. This was in the outer court, okay? But so in the outer court, people would, these um, merchants would sell the items that people would use during the Passover services, right? 
uh, turtle doves, and lambs, et cetera, right? And so when he saw that, this is what he's responding to. And 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 they came they, and they come to Jerusalem and, and went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves, right? And would not suffer that any of them should carry any vessel through the temple, right? Uh, my footnote there says, and would not allow that any man. Now, this is it's, it's three things about this. I'm gonna come. I'm I'm, I'm gonna share this in a minute. And he said, and would not suffer that any man would not allow. Right? Underline that phrase. Would not allow. Right? And that phrase to me would not allow suggests that Jesus was not some passive uh, preacher or passive uh, person. It said would not allow. It seems to me that he's he's he is engaging. This is an act of emotion. This is an act of a revel. Lucian, right? Look, and it says, and he taught saying, it is written, my house shall now be called of all, my house shall be called of all nations, the house of prayer, but ye have made it into a den of thieves. Now, now underline that, right? And the scribes and the chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him because all the people was, was astonished at his doctrine. Now, that word doctrine means teaching. This is a teaching moment. The cursing of the fig tree was a teaching moment. Okay? And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unpack this for you. And when the evening was come, he went out into the city. Okay? Now, a uh, very simple analysis of this very simplified, okay? Uh, a Sunday school, a vacation Bible school version, interpretation of this, right? It's preached that this is a story about order, okay? This is how most of Christendom teaches it that this is about that no business should occur in the church. And some people use this text to not allow the selling of dinners. They don't have raffles. They don't have any business occurring in the church. And they use this text as it. This isn't about order. This is about justice. This is about economic justice. This is about exploitation, right? Because look at what it said. He says, he says, my, my house, um, my, you know, my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it what? The dead of thieves. And of thieves. Right? And so what was Jesus' issue? Jesus' Jesus's issue was that. These capitalists were what? They were exploiting the people economically. Are you with me? You see the see these these, you know, I liked what we read a minute ago, right? I liked what, what we read a minute ago off the internet where where the author referred to these people as profiteers. What is what do you think that word? Remember we showed that right. He said profiteers. What do you think a profiteer is? <clears throat> Somebody who's profit who, who profit off of others. Okay. Okay. Right, and so so the problem was was that these individuals was coming in and they were taking advantage of the people who came from out of town. And they they wanted to get some items to be sacrificed because they truly truly believed right 
in the sacrifice of of these doves and lambs and 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 etc right that they would appease the god right and he would cover them he would bless them that was the purpose of the sacrifices right now if you think about this why right, you think about this right see this is looking at this from the lens of of liberation theology it's, it's looking through the lens of social justice right Jesus could have just dealt with the fact that we don't need to be doing any of this because I'm about to die at Calvary for the sins of the world. I'm going to be the sacrificial lamb, right? And none of this is going to need to happen anyway after I die at Calvary. Because when I die at Calvary, then it is going to end the whole need for these earthly sacrifices are not necessary. Jesus could have dealt with that. But he didn't because his heart, just like at in dealing with the with blind Barnabas, his heart was for the people. His heart was for the dispossessed. His heart was for the oppressed, those that are exploited. So that's a that's an interesting way of, of really understanding this. Because it is, it's the only way. Because he said, the den of thieves. You have made this house a den of thieves. This isn't about order. It's about fairness, justice, righteousness. What am I saying about this text? And what is your wow moment about this text? Well, my wow moment is that uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, they had lost their spirituality and it wasn't thinking about anybody but themselves. Jesus witnessing witnessing this, this is his sole purpose, you know, uh, his uh, 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 ultimate love for the people and what the, and what the temple signified, you know, this is a house of prayer and sacrifice, you know, you know, you, you, uh, you are totally, you have totally gotten away from that, you know. You know here, here, here you are selling stuff for for money. You know, you, uh, you know where where is where is your spirituality? You know where's your love for the people? That's what I'm getting out of it. Right. Anyone else? Well, do you hear me? Mm-hmm. You hear me? Oh, yeah, we hear you. Yeah. We can oh, hear you. Yeah. What was going on at that time during the Passover? A lot of people came in, came in into Jerusalem, and then then you have kinds that just was was going to commercialize off the people. They had that's what they came to do. They came to um, to um, price gouging on 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 the things that they were selling, which it was. You know, against the temple rules as far as uh, selling things in the in the in the temple, but they had you know that was you know like you were saying, Bishop. They was capitalizing the economy. They was you know gouging the things and trying to make money off of the people instead of looking at their spirituality, trying to you know talk with them and and and, and see where their needs are spiritually. But you know we have that today. We have some people just care about you know, what they're going to put in their pocket instead of them caring about somebody's uh, uh, spirituality, you know. But we see that every day, you know, the same thing. But that's why Christ came, you know, to, to do away with all of that and check all of that. But, you know, that's what I get out of it, you know. And that's my wild moment about it. So that's, that's where I'm at on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? <laughs> well, I was, um, uh, go ahead. For me, my wow moment is just Jesus being Jesus. Because even though the people were coming to the temple to make those purchases, 
They didn't know better, but Jesus did. And he was protecting them and saying, this is not a place for that. You will not take advantage of them. Even those, even today, those that don't know better, he'll still protect you and show you that he won't let you be taken advantage of and he will show you the right way. Okay. That was good. Good. Very good. All right. Uh, Pastor Phil? Well, you know, for me, it's, it's good to see this side of Jesus operating, you know, in the church because unfortunately, I mentioned this before, that Christians sometimes are the hardest ones to discipline and to say something to. And we have to understand that, you know, we do have to be disciplined at times. You know, not nitpicking and trying to find problems in everything that we do, but we also have the mindset to understand that we do need to be corrected when we get out of bounds. And so it's good to see that, you know, Jesus, that we think sometimes, or, you know, people don't understand Jesus. He's just this lovely, forgiving type of guy walking around and, and saying it's going to be okay and so forth. But, you know, we see this other side. Right. So um, when you look at verse 16, right, it says, and, and he would not suffer or allow that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. He shut it down. He shut it down, right? He shut it down. He used force. He shut it down. Now, this is very interesting because from the chief priest's perspective, now look at verse 18, and it says, and the chief chief and the scribes and the chief priests heard it, right? So they heard it. So it's two different, so it's two aspects here, right? So it's one, it's like, why is this guy coming into our temple? We are, we are the scribes and the chief priests. Why is he coming and taking authority, right, in our business? So that's one thing, right? Because it says, and they and they saw it how they might destroy him, right? Then the other thing is, is that maybe the pastor, right, was getting a kickback. Hello, somebody? Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe he was getting a kickback from the oversales. Right. You never know. <laughs> right? You know, and, yeah. you know, we don't know, but we surmise it. <laughs> I mean, you know, and so the, I mean, because you know, he's not, he's not in this, in this text, in this story only, right? He is not breaking any, any Torah law. He's not saying he's God. He's not saying he can forgive sins, all the other stuff that he did. In this instance, what he did was that he shut down their underground economy. Right. Right. And that's my point. I was saying, you know, that sometimes people in the church don't want to be disciplined. Yeah, exactly. All right. So it says, and and the and the chief chief heard it, and they saw that they might destroy him, for they feared him because all the people were was astonished at his doctrine or his teaching. Right. Right. And when the evening come, he went out of the city. Now I'm gonna tell you something else that's also interesting too. Right. Is that if you remember, what did the first thing he do when he came into? Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, what we call Palm Sunday. What's the first first thing he did? He told them um, to. No, 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 no. He didn't tell. He didn't tell. He, he, walked, he walked through the temple, uh, checking it out. Yeah, he walked through see. the temple. Yes, he right. walked through the temple. What's going on? Yep. That's good in that. That's yep. good. But that was the first thing. That's all he did. He had no communication, no nothing. He That's just right. walked in and checked it out. So the question, here's the question for us as believers. What do you do when you see injustice? So the first thing he does when he comes back into Jerusalem, he stops and he attempts to get something to eat because he was hungry, right? Then he went to deal with the oppression that he saw. So the, so the first thing that Jesus does doing Passover work is an act of social justice. The very first thing. 
one of the very last things he does before he enters into Jerusalem is that he he engages in the act of compassion for the uh, oppressed blind man. Okay, so as we go back to um, as we go back to our screen, right? So we have here. Um, okay, so we dealt with the fig tree, and we did we dealt with the cleansing of the temple. So let's look at Jesus's authority question, Mark eleven, right, uh, twenty seven, right, okay, Mark eleven twenty seven, right. It says, and and they come again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, there came to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Right. And they, now 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 here's the other thing, too. Now, last week we talked about a progressive revelation. Right. Now we're going to see a progressive. The the denunciation or a progressive disciplining or decret or 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 a progressing. Uh, it's a progression of their anger toward him to denounce or to put down so that word denunciation right so it says and they come to jerusalem now this is jesus and his disciples right so, right okay they got a hotel outside in bethany right and and they come again to jerusalem and as he was walking in the temple immediately he was walking into the temple right there come up to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders you got to read it like that right because what happened, Brother Bird, the last time he was in a temple? Say that again. You said what happened the last time he was in the temple? Yeah. That he over that he overthrew the that he overthrew the uh, the tables. Right. And, and he so, got in, and he got in the in in, in the in the yeah. in the midst of their underground economy. Mm -hmm. right. Stop. Yeah. So so then when he comes back, now the authority, now you got to visualize this. So he comes back. And as soon as he comes in, what happens? As soon as he, he came comes back in, what happens? The scribes and all of them challenged him. They come we don't we, we ain't read challenge yet. It says said, let's not get ahead of the text. <laughs> okay. It says, it says they come to him. We're only on verse 27, right? So they come to him. Could you imagine when that black boy walks into that department store and now all of the security, what do they do? They they converge on him, right? Follow him, whatever. Right? right. So they're come, huh? No, go ahead. Okay. So, so, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna stay. We're gonna just stay one text at a time, right? So he says, in verse twenty-seven, all they do is come to him. They're come to him, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders, right? And they say to him, right? By what authority does thou these things, right? Okay. Now remember, if you remember when we dealt with the temple, right? You, you, there, there was two two issues here. First of all, he comes in like he has some authority, right? Who are you? Right. You ain't even on the board. You ain't even a chief priest. I don't um recognize whatever uh uh experience Doctor, you right, had right, at right, uh, right, in right, in yeah. uh whatever whatever experience you had in e e e Egypt, right? So there's there is there's the story that he be, he was a priest. That he went to England when he was in Egypt, he learned all of this stuff. So they ain't recognizing none of that. They ain't recognizing God's hand, right? Uh, after he was baptized, we remember that's that's when he was ordained, right? Remember that when he was mm -hmm. baptized, he came out of the water and the heavens opened up, right? And then the voice came from heaven, um, "This is my beloved son, in whom in whom I, I am well pleased." Right? These priests are right. like, what did they say? They say verse 28. What do they say? By what authority does, does thou do these things? Yeah. And so it says, who gave these? Who gave authority these authority authority to, you. to do these things? Right? So it's either God gave you the authority or the devil gave you the authority. <laughs> so they're questioning. Right. By what authority do you have? Right. Now, verse 29 says, 
And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will ask of, of you one question. Right? So he turns it around, right? Are you with me? Y'all with me? Right. That's what he, he turns did. It around. He said, yeah. I will ask of you one question and answer me. And I will tell you by what well, authority I do these. Right? So, so he asked the question, right? The baptism of John. Was it from heaven or of men? Now, you got to understand who John the Baptist was, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you also got to understand these chief priests, right? These chief priests are always playing politics, okay? They're always playing politics. They're always wondering what the people are going to say. Or whether or not this is a trick bag, right? Because they knew that John the Baptist had the people's heart, right? Je Jesus asked the question because he knew that John the Baptist didn't come through their process, right? That's right. He, was, yeah. he, he wasn't, no, he was an outsider. Right. Right? Yeah. But he had the people's heart. Right, right. So, so, Jesus asked the question, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. He's taking a little authority, a right? little, little bit of air. Yeah. Right? Put a little, little bass in his voice. Yeah, a little bit of bass. <laughs> a little bit of, that's good. A little bass in his voice. A little, yeah, a little bass in his voice. You know, uh, and they, now look at verse 31. It says, and they did what? What's up, Mo? Bible study. Uh, they, they what? Say. They what? What did they do? Read it. What does this say? Read it. Read it. What does it say? They talked talk it over among themselves. They talk yeah. among themselves. Yeah, so they reasoned with themselves, yeah. saying, now look at, look, 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 at how, look at how they play politics, right? So they, <laughs> you know, and, and so, <laughs> they, so they, they say to themselves, okay, now, we ain't going to think about the truth. We're only trying to find the right answer. All right? That's their thinking. So they say, if we say from heaven, he will say, why then do you not believe? Why, why then did ye not believe him? <laughs> Verse 32 says, but if we say of men, they feared the people. You see that? So mm -hmm. if we say he was, that he was not from God, right, that he was in the flesh, they feared the people because John the Baptist had the hearts of the people. I mean, John the Baptist was out in the w w wilderness and people came out of the temple. They ain't even, they stopped <laughs> going to the temple. They was going, they was going out in the um, w w wilderness to hear this man, John the Baptist, who ate locusts who and et cetera, right? right? And so look at verse 32, it says, uh, but if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. Right. And they answered and said unto Jesus, We cannot tell. Now, here, now these are the, now you gotta understand. Now, these are these chief priests, right? Now, they're, they're part of the Sanhedrin court. They've been hearing all the stories of this guy up in Galilee named 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 Jesus and he he's doing this and he's doing that and they talking among themselves. I wish he would come to uh Passover. I can't wait. Listen, I'll argue and debate him down. I'll tell him in his face he's wrong. Look at what they do. Look at what they do. They said, uh, and they answered and said to Jesus, We cannot say. Right. right, and it's Jesus answered and said unto them, "Well, if that's the case, neither do I. Mm. By what authority I do these?" <laughs> so, you know, you know, Pastor, with this here, this was so uh, one of my favorites here because you know it's a couple of things. You know, sometimes we have to discern the conversation that we're having with people, and what's the motive behind it. Because sometimes we think that we always have to say something and give an answer back. 
but sometimes you don't have to tell nobody anything. Yeah, that's just right. like Jesus did here, you right. know, because he knew what their motive was. Right. That's what right. Was behind it. Right. So I'm not going to play this game with you. Amen. He, he put it right back to him. That's right, Pastor. That's what he did. Let them figure it out. Amen. Like playing chess. Your That's, move. Right. That's right, Brother Shaw. That's right. Okay, <laughs> so so our um, steps to the cross. So we got two more. Um, Jesus is anointing, right? Um, chapter 14, Mark 14, verse 3, right? Right? So this is called Jesus anointed at Bethany, right? So for somebody that's really interested in studying, you, you know, Bethany plays a very prominent role, right? Ministry. In, yeah. in the passion story. He is based out of Bethany, right? It's very interesting, okay? So look what it says in, in chapter 14, verse 3. It says, and being where? In Bethany. Being in Bethany. All right. In the house of Simon the leper. Okay. And so he was where? In, in the house of Simon the leper. Now, you got to understand that that right there was a little bit of a... Um, of a controversy because the leopards were viewed as being, you know, cursed, cursed of God. They were, you know, outcast. Yeah. Outcast. Yeah. They were, they were, they, were. they were impure. And Jews did not have any, you know, touch. They were, they were like unclean. That's the touch, not the unclean thing. Okay. Right. So he is, he's already, Hanging with it. See, and this is why that guy, I want y'all, I wish I said I was going to speak to this too. Okay. I said I was going to speak to this too. Don't you all get caught up on this internet preaching. There's a guy that's on who is totally out of order. And everybody's following him named Jennings, right? I don't know. I don't know about him and I don't seek that he, out. He is preaching. He is preaching a gospel of judgment, right? I heard him the other day. It's really yeah. interesting. Other day, and he was saying, "What does a saint have anything to do with a sinner?" And he said, "What? Wh why? Why? I could. You bet not. I don't want to see any of you talking to, fellowshipping, going to a party, going to nothing. I understand going to a bar, dancing, all of that. Oh, he went. He went in. He went in. Right. So here, here is the question. Then, right. Look at verse number three. It says." And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leopard, Jesus spent a lot of time with outcasts. Right, he did. A lot of time with outcasts, right? He, he, did. So, he did. And so it says, and being in Bethany in the house of Simon the, 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 the leopard, as he sat at me, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, right? That was very precious. And she broke the box. And poured it on his head and there were some that were indignant within themselves and said why was this waste of the ointment made now hear this right very interesting story here it says for it might have been sold for more than 300 uh pence and have been given to the poor and they m m murmured against her Right. Why did they murmur against her? Because they felt that they wasted the oil on Jesus. The oil could have been sold to help the poor. All right. And Jesus said, what? Let her along. Why trouble ye her? Right. She hath wrought a good work on me. Now, underline right. that word, a good work. All right. Parent and for. Right. I'm, All right. So I'm good, okay. A good work. <laughs> so this, this story is about um this story is about f f financial management okay because look at verse seven it says for ye have the poor with you always right and whensoever ye will ye may do for them but me ye have not always and right. she has done what she could she has come aforehand, or verse eight, 
uh, she has come beforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. Right. Really I say unto you, whosoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that that she have done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. So that's a you know that's a real interesting thing because in 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 you know without her knowing it, right, right. She's doing a prophetic thing. So there's a lot of questions. Proph yeah, it was prophesied, right. Yes, yes, right. So he, so so that's a very a very interesting thing, right? But it but it's also what is also telling in the story, right? Is that those that are followers of Jesus in this instance, they ha they have his heart, right? Because their concern was not to take the money and go buy uh, a stallion or to go out to dinner, right? Or to buy a new house, a new car. The, the, this is why I'm saying that they had his heart, right? They were concerned about helping the poor, you know? So that's a, a noble thing, a noble thing, right? And so there is a, um, throughout these stories, you're going to see, and really throughout the gospels, you, you will see that among the followers of Jesus and the early uh, early church, there was a strong preference for helping the poor and those that were in need. There, there was a giving, a giving, uh, a giving uh, outside of themselves, right? Now, there are times that Christ can take us to a level that was above us. Christ's prophecy there was truly above their comprehensive, you know, comprehension. They they were they were just attempting to comprehend that he was going to die at Calvary and rise again. They don't they don't really have the um, uh, months and years that Paul would have to, you know, analyze Christ as the suffering servant. They don't have the reflective period as Paul had because Paul's interaction with the Christian church came some years down the road, but they're in the midst of it, right? So they don't have any background. They don't even have time to think. This stuff is happening so fast to them, right? So we have to give them credit because this is all brand new. And so what Christ has said to them was something that was truly above them. It was truly above them. You know? In, any thoughts on this passage? Yeah. First thing, Christ came to, to save the Lord. That's what he came to do. You know, he didn't came to get the, the rich and, and all that, because he knew that they were not going to listen to the gospel, his teaching. He knew that the poor were, were they was very vulnerable. They was, you know, they had a lot of issues and they were looking for a way out. And that's why God sent him to be the pretty pretty agent for our sins. That's why he came for the loss. And, 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 and his prophecy is, is unfolding right there. It's unfolding. He's doing the will of the Father. He ain't come here to do his thing. He's doing what God sent him to do to save the ones that was lost he didn't come to, to do away with the law he came to fulfill the law with the new testament of his blood and that's, and that's all under that's all under the covering of that if, 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 if you study and read about it that's what i see about it you know i'm i'm gonna let it go right there bishop you know okay all right anyone else I see a little foreshadowing when she, when um he, he said to the disciples, "Don't be angry that um she anointed his body before time," because I remember I might be jumping ahead when they took him off the cross, the crucifixion. They cleaned him up and, and perfumed his body. Right, exactly, exactly. So a little exactly. foreshadowing, I see. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. So we're going to end here and we just added really. So we have 19. So it's really, it's really 20. Um, it's really 20. And, and so as we study, right. So it's really 20 because I knew I was missing something. I knew I was missing something. So here, here's where we're going to end at. It's the uh, Passover meal. Steps to the cross, yeah. So so this is... I might even have these numbered wrong. Um, okay, so look at... This is our final study on <clears throat> tonight. So this is the, the Passover meal, right? So... This is, uh, I'm, I'm going to look at verse 10, right? So now, up to this point, so all we're doing is reading from the Gospel of Mark. So, so we're not we're not incorporating, you know, Luke. You can read Luke. It, it tells the story. You can tell. Right. You can look at uh, Matthew, which tells the story. We are looking at it from the eyes of Mark. The, the Gospel of Mark was the first Gospel written. Okay, it's the oldest of all the gospels. Okay, and so by the time the other gospels come along, they are adding to those stories. Okay, so if you want to, if you want to say what was the purest story that's not embellished, right? You know, embellished where stories are, you know, are given a little bit more bling bling to them. Marx is very straightforward, and he only deals with like the main facts, okay? Mark, who who was Mark, okay, right? Mark was a student of Peter, right? He was a student of Peter. He was he was like his aide, okay? So a lot of what Pete, what Mark, Mark was not with Jesus. He was with Peter, post yeah. Jesus, right? So this this gospel is written post Christ, right? But it's written from the eyes of Mark or really from the ears of, of Mark because he heard these stories from Peter. He was not an eyewitness. Okay. Now look at what, so, so after, so at this point, right. Mark injects this story in chapter 10. It's two verses. He injects it here. He says, and J J Judas Iscariot, one of the 12, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he saw how he might conveniently betray him. Now, it's very interesting here. You know, if you become a student of the crucifixion story and to really begin to reflect as to why did Jesus betray him? And, and, and you can't oversimplify it by simply saying, because God, God, it was God's mm -hmm. plan. Yeah. Right. Well, God's plan. if it was God's plan, then, you know, he, you know, he didn't have a choice. He didn't have a choice. Right. But so if you, if you, if you look at it from an academic standpoint, a historical standpoint, a cultural standpoint, you, you do learn that within his among his followers, they all came from different tribes within Judaism. They were from different places, right? They followed him for different reasons. So, you know, you have the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Essenes, and you have another group called the Zealots, okay? And they were the group, they were the, they were the spiritual group that were viewing Christ they were they were they were praying that God would send a warrior king. They right. were, they were they were a group working to overthrow the the Roman, Roman government, right? The Roman government, right? Go ahead. So so it's yeah. interesting that at, what did Jesus do? I I don't see him see. See, I've had this this Bible study before, and 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 maybe. He said, when did he begin to think that Jesus is not the one, right? Mm -hmm. See, I don't see, see, there's the story that 
he betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. Okay. Okay. So if that's the case, then say that is the case. That was his, but what was he going to use the silver for? He was going to use it to fund the revolution. Right. But at what point did he change his mind about Jesus? He followed him all along. Somewhere along the right, if you notice when we studied about that's why I studied to show yourself approved, a workman oh, needs God. to be saved, <laughs> rightly dividing the word of God. That's why it's important for us to study this from the first day that we picked it up to now. If you're not following along the way, none of this is going to make sense. Because right. if you remember when we first started, we started out that, that as they were on the road to Jerusalem, it says that he now began to tell them who he really was, right? So this fella didn't know. So at what point did he say, wait a minute, I ain't going, that's, I'm bunked that, right? I'm, you know, I'm following you, man. You the guy back home, you was talking all that talk and you was standing up to the Roman empire. I just knew, Lord, that, that you were the one that was going to help us restore Israel. Right. And now we on the road going to Jerusalem. He thinking we're on the road going to Passover for what? Revolution. Now he's on the road to what? Right. In, he down there on the road. And, and right. now Jesus tell him, uh, I want y'all to know when I get there, I'm going to die. They're going. What? And look what Peter did. Peter rebuked him, right? Mm-hmm. While Peter rebuked him, J -J Judas, he, he changed his mind. At what point? See, that's a whole nother question. Somebody wrote a book on that. At what point did Judas decide to betray him? So anyway, so it's very interesting that, right? And, and look at, look, so, so the chief priests are ready for it, right? So it says, it says, and when they heard it, these are the chief priests, right? They were glad. And promised to give him money. Right? And he saw it how he might conveniently betray him. We're going to find that next week when we study the Garden of Gethsemane. Right? Now, here's the final Passover meal. So it says the first day. Now, look at this, Brother Shaw, right? So yeah. it's the first day, because you mentioned this the other day. So, so in the midst of Passover, right, there are different holy days. So it says... Yeah. And the first day of unleavened bread, right? When they right. killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, "Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover?" So they were Jews, right? The tradition, right? They were traditions, yes, right, I, right. Go ahead, right, right. And so, and yeah, and Bird was talking about it. Go ahead. Okay, and he sent it forth two of his disciples and said unto them, go ye into the city and they shall find um, you a man bearing a pitcher of water, follow him. So this is, this goes back, Deborah Shaw. You still with us, Pastor Shaw? Yes, I'm listening. Okay. So this goes back to this whole thing. Of maybe there, there was a big plan and there was more connections, right? Than we really realized, right? Because he said, I already made arrangements. Right? Right. Ain't that what right. Saying? right. right. Well, he made right. Rain. right. He says, yeah, go into the city and man. you shall find a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And whosoever he shall, and wheresoever he shall go in, right? That that is our safe house. Yeah. 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 Come on. Hello, somebody. Come on. A little intrigue, a little conspiracy theory here, right? So he said, and whosoever and, and wheresoever he shall go. And say ye to the groom, to the good man of the house or the owner, what that the master said, right? So, so this man, believe me, brother, there is much more going on than is revealed here, right? It says, and the okay. master says, where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples, and he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. Right there, there, make ready for us, and his and his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover, and right. in the evening, right, right. So, so it's now, it's now Thursday, mm, right. Right? 
Uh -oh. early. Go ahead. All, right, so all of this is going to happen very quickly. Okay? Right, right. And it says, um, and now, now there's some some discussion. Yeah, no, this, this is some discussions these days. There's different disagreements about the days. Okay, so it says, and his his disciples went forth, came into the city, right, and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And in the evening, right, he cometh with the twelve, and as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. Mm -hmm. So your betrayer is here is what's sitting across from you. And they began to be sorrowful. And he said unto him one by one, and he said unto him one by one, so, and they said unto him one by one, is it I? And another said, is it I? Right. He answered and said unto them, it is one of the 12 that dipped with me in the dish. And the son of man indeed goeth as it was written of him. But woe to the man by whom the son of man is betrayed. Yeah. Good were he for that man if he had never. Um, you know, right. And as Born they did again. eat. Now here is the communion. We, we say this every first Sunday. Right. 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 And as they did eat, Jesus took him and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and when he had given thanks, right? So, so when we have communion, this is our saying, right? Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they, and they all drank of it, right? right. And he said unto them, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed out for, for many. Now we say that during communion, right? Verily right. I say to you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day I drink of it in the kingdom of God. Now, with this Passover meal, it's interesting to know what is here and what's not here. Now, Luke adds the story of him saying, you know, he who drinks of it unworthily, and it's another says he and they gave thanks, they sang a hymn, right? Mark keeps it very simple. You don't find that here. Okay. Right. Right, right, right. now, look at verse 26. It says, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives, right? Now it's at night, right? This is at night, Thursday night. Right. So he don't get right. no sleep. He he don't get no sleep. All this is everything else that happens is on Thursday night. Come okay. on now. And they said unto them, right? And Jesus said unto them, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. You see this? this right? night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. Peter ends up doing what? Smite the shepherd. How many times? How many Three times? times? Three, Three times. Three times, right? Come they on, shall bro. smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. And after right. that, I am risen. I will go before you in Galilee. And Peter said unto him, although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Right? Now you hear Peter here? He's boasting, standing out. Yeah. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Now Peter yeah. said, he said, said although all y'all shall be offended. And my verse 29 says, cause to stumble, right? He says, not I. Now this same cat talking this, <laughs> man, right? Soon as the pressure comes, he says, I know not the man. Oh, I was not with him. It was not me. He denied him three times, right? Right. And people said, and now look at what Jesus said to him. And that's why I tell people in the church, sometimes we just need to be quiet. Because the more you talk, I said that in my sermon the other day. I said, you know, the more you talk, the more people know how uninformed you are. You know what I mean? <laughs> now look at what Jesus said. Really, I say unto thee. He says this to who? Jesus is talking to who? Peter. He's talking to, Peter. to the twelve disciples. Oh, he's talking to Peter. Yeah, he's talking now look at verse 29. Peter. In, in verse 29, Peter said, All the 
all oh, yeah, the people, all y'all shall be offended, yet not will I. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Peter, right? That this day, even in this night, right? So remember, all of this is happening. He's going from, from judgment hall to judgment hall. Peter denies him. This is all happening on Thursday night, right? And he said that this, that, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crows twice, thou shalt deny me three times. But he spake the more vehemently, if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee. Now, this is Peter. Look at what he says. It says, but Peter spoke the more what? Vehemently. Yeah. What does vehemently mean? Emotionally, right? Like, if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any way. Likewise, also, they all said that, right? Now we go into the good garden. This is all the same night. They have they have communion. Then they then it, then it says, and they came to a place which which was named Gethsemane. And he said unto his disciples, "Sit ye here while I shall pray." I'm gonna check the time. It's eight oh five. Y'all want to end here, or should we read this last section? Go ahead and read the last section. Everybody, cool. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, Pastor Shaw, you cool? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm just checking in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just have me to say, keep, I'm really I, listening. I'll keep going. I'll keep going. And I and I don't want to do that. Okay. Right. Yes. So verse 32 said, and they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. Right? So right. now this is the point. They didn't go to the garden to pray. He went to pray. Right. Okay, so we gotta we gotta give the disciples. They fell asleep. This is at night, right? Right. They didn't go to pray. He went to pray, right? Right. And he taketh with him Peter, James, and John. Why Peter, James, and John? Because they were the chief disciples. They was close to him. Right. They was a close right. Right. Not just the close. They were the chief among him. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So Peter, James, and John. And began to be sore. Um, and, and so, okay. And he taketh with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be sore amazed and to be very, very heavy, right? So, my footnote it says for 33 on the side, Deborah Shaw, what does your, your side footnote say for, for verse 33.1? Thirty-three point one. It says, "Oh, you said the side note or the commentary?" The side note. Okay, thirty-three. It says, uh, "Greatly troubled, deeply distressed." Okay, so, so he says, so, he, so, so the trauma is the, the heaviness is coming upon him, trauma. right? Yeah. Now look at verse thirty-three. Trauma. Right. So look at verse 33 again. Right. Mm -hmm. And he taken with him Peter, James, and John and began to be what, Sister Shaw? What does your footnote say? Um, it says greatly troubled and deeply <laughs> distressed. Distressed, right. Okay. And 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 said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Terry right. be here and watch. So his flesh, the fear, the 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 future pain, his his flesh. Uh, Noel Jones preaches a sermon that's called "The Agony of Destiny." The agony, the humanity, the humanity. Right. Yes, the agony of destiny. His humanity is beginning to war with his divinity. Write that right. down. His wow. his humanity, and we all go through that. There's a there's a spark of the divine in us. It's called the anointing. It's it's God in us. But the but, hey. but Paul, Paul would tell us that we have this treasure in earthland vessels. Are you with me? Are you with Come me? On. Come on now. Yep. Yep. So when when we get to um this is good. So, so, so when we get here, 
right? Look, look what he says. It says, and said unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here. And he says what? And watch. Now he gives them an assignment, right? And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed. And prayed that, right? He prayed for a reason. He prayed that. He's praying to God. He's saying, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him, right? Now, the hour meaning the agony, okay? Right? That's what he means. Perhaps the agony or maybe the future, uh, you know, you know, his future destiny. So you, you can look at it in different ways, but it here, here, Mark is, is giving this to description. He prayed that if it were possible that the hour might pass from him. So that hour might be this moment of agony or the future cross, right? But here, but look at what his prayer is. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Now, look what he says. He says, you have the power to do this, right? He says, all things are possible with you. He says to him, what? Take away this cup from me. Oh, right. Now, I don't know. Now, watch this. I don't know how long it is between the take away this cup from me and the nevertheless. I don't know if it was quick. I don't know if it was 30 minutes, if it was an hour, if there was silence or prayer. But somewhere along the line, he concludes, nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. There's a thinking it over in between that. I don't know. Somebody else could say, oh, I just believe Jesus was, he would not have wrestled. No. You know, the Bible would tell us that he was tempted as all points. See, there's a scripture. You read that scripture before? Jesus was tempted as at all points as, as a man, as we were. Right, tempted in the wilderness. He was tempted, right, in the wilderness. And here, yes, he's he's tempted to be turned to turn back, right? Right. Now, look at verse thirty-seven. It says, "And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and mm -hmm. saith unto Peter, Simon, thou fall asleep on me. Couldest not thou watch for one hour? <laughs> right. Now, right. underline that word for one hour. Right." So for me, that one hour confirms that, I want you to pay attention to this, that the period between him asking and concluding was a little under an hour. Mm. It wasn't immediate. Because from the time he tells them to watch, it, he goes directly into prayer. Right? So he, 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 he agonized this thing. Okay? Then look at verse 38. It says, Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. That's a very good scripture, right? Amen. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. temptation. Look at this. It says, the spirit is truly ready. Oh, God. Oh, flesh okay. is weak. Right. And Ooh. again, he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again. Right? Now, it says, so look at verse 39. It's interesting, right? Right? Now, I don't know what that means in verse 39. Does that mean that he wasn't completely sure and he had to go pray again? Or is this all part of a continuum of him interacting while he's praying? Okay, I'm going to say that again. Verse 39 says, and again, he went away and prayed and spake the same word. Right? So, this agony was going on, right? Now look at verse 40, 40, it says, and when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither was they would answer him. So they were knocked out. And he said, come at the third time and said unto them, now look, the third time. So that means he went back into the garden and prayed three times, right? You see that? Mm-hmm. Right. He says, sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hours come. 
Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up. Let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. In verse 43, we're going to end here. And immediately, while he, while he yet spake, cometh come the betrayer, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and knives, and the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kid, that same as he take him and lead him away safely. So, you, you know, this is, this is, this is a lot, man. <laughs> you know, this stuff, you know, I mean, he, you know, he has, you know, he has dinner, right? This is all on a Friday night. You know, if you think about the um, deaths, right. Of um, people, you know, right. You know, tragic deaths, right? Tragic death, unplanned deaths, right? Right? Or 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 any kind of trauma that crosses one's path immediately. Mm. Immediately. He goes to dinner, right? They have church, they sang a hymn. They go to pray. And then all of a sudden all the agony falls on him comes out of that prayer and now he's arrested and as we're going to study next tuesday he's going to go from judgment hall to judgment hall right all of his prophecy right then he's going to end up on a cross weary right no sleep yeah. now see see when you study the word deeply it makes it makes him carrying that cross up Galgotha's hill even more amazing. No sleep, brother Bird. Right, right. Then he's <laughs> drained. He's already drained. Have you ever been? You know how you feel when you when you are stressed out, lifeless, Motion, physically drained. Yeah, drained. Yeah. And then then he you leaves have. the garden. He leaves the. He's betrayed by one of his 12, even if you know it, right? He knew he was going to the cross to die, right? But he still had Trump. So you know he had Trump. He knew that Peter would deny him, but I'm sure it tra traumatized him. He knew <laughs> right. that, on. that, that one on. of the 12 would betray him. Come anyway, on, man. Amen. We can go. Yeah, so... Um, as we get ready to end, uh, now we ask the question again, right? What is your wow, wow, wow moment? What, what have you learned new? What, what uh, have you grown? That's why people, there's some people who are not studying tonight. Mm. Psycho, because they've been through it, right? And Pastor Shaw, probably uh, more than anybody on this call, has has uh, has along with, and probably Derek Bird as well, uh, and, and and you know, well, there's a few of you who have been through at least ten years of this. But I think for me, for this, this is my wow wow moment, right? <laughs> it's my wow wow moment. Then you can speak up. Of all the years that I have taught it, I don't know what it is. Maybe I've grown spiritually. Maybe it's is whatever it might be. I don't know. I think I have learned more, and and more has been re been revealed to me about this story. It's called a rhema word. Logos mm. is just facts. You can't change it. A rhema word is a deeper insight that's unexpected. It's a transformative word. I've learned more out of this study this time. And I've been to seminary. I took Old Testament, the New Testament, all of this. Mm -hmm. I have learned more out of these few weeks and more new insight, you know, as has as it's just been amazing to me. I don't know. It may be the same thing. And maybe yeah, it's just ringing clear. Anybody else? What is your wow, wow, wow moment uh, on this evening? I would like to say that 
Um, I think maybe the choice uh, of the style, um, the inductive studying, the format that you did this time that is um, kind of different from, you know, recent years and okay. uh, just really breaking it down in the way that you have has allowed us to receive more or get different insight and perspectives because we studied it different, I think. And so that's amazing and wonderful for me. All right. Anyone else? My wow moment this evening would be- Wow, the, wow, wow moment. Wow, wow, wow moment would be the I, breakdown of the fig tree. And knowing that one, the fig tree was, it withered because it was not barren. But to know that God, God is looking for a full fig, but as long as he sees that evidence that there is growth possible, that he is he he is okay with that as long as he knows you are growing. And from a from a botanical perspective, what was Christ looking for? It's called what? Tash Sakach. Am yeah. I saying it right? Yeah. It's spelled yeah. how spelled T A H S K? Yeah. K S H. Yeah. T T A Yeah. T A K A S H. Okay. Yeah. So what that study showed was that while the fig tree was not to be fully blooming, but by that time there should have been some evidence that it was not barren and it should have produced a small fig that's called a tanish. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Siobhan. Uh, Carmen, what is your wow, wow, wow moment? Wow, wow, wow moment. Um, I think uh, the story of Jesus's crucifixion is always a wow moment. Um, you know, this is something I've learned and studied growing up. Well, 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 wait, wait. Well, well, I, I have to. I, I'm sorry. I have to. Now, we haven't gotten to the crucifixion. Yet. Do you mean the passion story? Just the old. I'm over sorry. Leading up to the, uh, leading to oh. leading up to the crucifixion. Oh. Um, but more so, I, I agree with Siobhan. My wild wow moment was more so the fig tree, um, the analogy with that. And actually, um, when you, when we all gave our input and then you mentioned that we have to appreciate um, the evidence that we're displaying, I, I thought that was interesting too, because I think sometimes uh, I know for me personally, too, you you want to remain humble at all times. So I, I I think that sometimes you don't necessarily you don't necessarily give yourself credit for the the small evidence or the steps that you're taking because you want to remain humble. You know, you want to remain in that humility. Um, so when you mention appreciation, I thought that was interesting. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. All right. Uh next, anyone? I'm thinking about I'm thinking about I'm thinking about the agony of undying love. How as we tried to demonstrate as how he tried to demonstrate how much he how much he went through, you know, all of the disappointments, uh, you know, them not understanding what was actually taking place. And then, and then, and then, them giving the impression that they understand, understood, and then they didn't understand about 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 all of the about the about the jealousy and and the hatred, you know, about the about the about the portrayal, you know. But it was all done out of love, something that he had to he had to undergo to bring God's plan into fruition. It was just, it was just, it was just the agony of his undying love. That's that's my wow, wow, wow moment. All right, who's next? Well, for me, all of it is because out of the years that I've been studying, each year we study this, and each year I, I see more and more change, uh, uh, explain more different than it was the year before. 
And this one is more in depth in explaining everything. And then I'm very intrigued by all of it because I never had it explained like that through all the years that I have been, been learning this. Okay. All right. Between you and Sister Shaw, I guess I've been just <laughs> Jack LeBang in the mother years, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Who's next? Who's next? Well, I'm just gonna make it short. Uh, my wild, wild moments is when um, the first and the Pahedrans questioned his authority. Who gave you this authority? And how he how he challenged them right back, you know, and told yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, that was know, powerful. Yeah, that, that was that was very powerful. How he challenged them, but he never gave them an answer because they never gave him an answer. Mm -hmm. So he was he put it out there for them to 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 answer their own question. Right. But they was afraid to do that because they weren't about more so where they, you know, that they Pharisees and that and how they live it. They didn't want none of that to be affected by the people. So they played that's it close. Good. So they just so, laid back. Huh? I said, no, that's good. That's good. So let me ask y'all this. How many people got a got a son or a daughter? Y'all got children? No matter how old they are. All right, we all got children, right? Yeah. So now, if your kid, if you, if you, if you call your kid and you want to check them, right, and they say to you, "Well, before I answer that, I got a question for you." <laughs> I hope you think of this passage. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Especially if they, especially if they, uh, if if they, if they, if they Bible kids, they can say, "Well, look, can I, can I have a a Jesus moment with you?" All right, dog. That's good. That was just funny to me. That thought came to my mind. Uh, all right, who's who has not said anything? Um, Sister Sierra. Uh, yeah, I I would just say my 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 wow wow. I don't know how many wows was in there. I think it was three wow 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 <laughs> moment. Um, my wow 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 moment was when you were talking about um how Jesus cleared the temple courts. And how you tied that to financial management and justice, I thought that was really interesting. I had never heard it like taught like that before. That's yeah. good. You know, never will. Well, <laughs> well, no, you will in some churches because there are, are some of us who are who are who are trained to look at this through the eyes of um of justice. Yeah. Who has an uh pastor fellows, uh Sean? Uh, Toya, I think. Well, for me, it's really um, just the interaction, just reading all the interactions of uh, the people with Jesus and Jesus' responses to them. I mean, it's always interesting when you take the time out and, and really just read this word, and it becomes more alive when you're doing it this way here. So you know, I enjoyed it. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right. Uh, uh, Dr. Natoya. Um, yeah, I'm I'm hanging my hat also on uh, the evidence. Uh, for years, I have always said that we co-create with God, and He blesses us when we demonstrate a deeper awareness, deeper revelation. And so, I think the display of the evidence is is that in an example. Um, for our growth and our continued growth as we continue to go deeper with him. But also every time I hear the, the passion story, um, it, is, it is just mind blowing at the unselfishness and to visually think about the words around mutilation uh, for us it just always I just continue to grow every time from that because it's just so real how much he loved us that he would not only sacrifice sacrifice was really the small part of it he took a beating for us yes, and died in a very brutal way and that that's mind-blowing all right. and, and and to add what she just said too, uh, and I believe that people really don't realize just how bad of a beating he actually took. 
I heard it said that after they got through with him, that he didn't even look human. Amen. So, um, right, right. So, uh, Brother Sean, I guess. Um, I I got to go back to the fig tree. Um, in particular, when they walked back back to the fig tree, um, when I initially studied it, um, it spoke when Peter said, uh, Rabbi, do you see um, the fig tree is dead? And um, Jesus spoke, do you have faith in God? Um, and he goes on basically to say, you know, how, how to pray, how to have faith that with, with prayer you can move mountains. So that was kind of a wild, wild uh, moment for yeah, me. And then, yeah. uh, when you put the spin on it too, to be thankful because you see evidence of growth, but really about when you speak about you could pray and move mountains and you can't have any doubt and when you pray uh forgive those that you have grudges against so your sins can be forgiven and, and truly pray mm -hmm. no doubt about that. all right amen all right but well, that is um wonderful i want to leave you with um hebrews 12th chapter and verse 2 it says, the looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of it, right? Who for the joy that was set before him. So what was his motivation? His eyes was on the prize. It was the joy on finishing his assignment, right? The joy Amen. of being the suffering servant, right? It says, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Even unto death despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God, right? But for the joy that was set before him. All right. Well, the, 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 listen, uh, don't forget um, next week is Holy Week, right? Uh, and um, or is it? Wait a minute. Next week is uh, Passover. No, Palm Sunday. Next week is Palm Sunday. Yeah. No, no, no. We we, we have a, another full week. Yeah. So Palm Sunday is the 24. Yeah, Palm Sunday is 24th. Easter is the uh, 31st. So we got... So next Wednesday, we will... Um, we will we will be able to um, <laughs> really get through it, all right? And then uh, the following, if we need another day, we'll come back on Tuesday, all right? So um, amen to everybody. This is a wonderful, wonderful night. Uh, allow us to pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for tonight for this wonderful, miraculous Bible study. We thank God for, for your being present with us and removed all the stress and anxiety from our work week, oh Lord, and how you have um, just allowed clarity of mind, clarity of understanding, uh, just flow, Lord, tonight. And I just thank you, Lord, and may, and may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts, Lord, be acceptable in your sight. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, everybody. Amen. 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 Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you all. For thank you. Wonderful evening. Amen. Siobhan, I'm going to call you now. Okay. Bye. I'll call you after I talk Pastor Shaw. Okay. Well, hold on. I need to hold on. Okay. Go, that's fine. Okay. Bye. All right. Hold on. Yeah. Deb, I'm ringing you. All right. Okay, everybody. <laughs>